Okay, trivia time. Time is on the clock. Name five things that automatically come to mind when thinking about wealth management or financial advisors. Ready, go. Oh, uh, that's easy. Um, bored, painful, rather listen to my in-laws. Numbers, numbers, numbers. Almost there. Uh, torture? We have a winner. Let's tell him what he's won. You've won the Pennywise Financial Podcast. Yes, it's a financial show, but we talk to you like human beings talk. Sure, we do the traditional retirement planning and money management, but we also help plan for other decisions like buying a car selling a home, buying vacation properties, or selling a business. We're more than financial advisors to you. Pennywise Financial, brought to you by Monarch Wealth Management. This is Pennywise Financial, and this is Constantine Katrinos. Welcome to the Pennywise Financial Podcast. This is Constantine here at Monarch Wealth Management with my co-host, Jason Georgiev. Welcome to the show, everyone. Today is Wednesday, November 9th, the day after the big election and polling. All those numbers came in. Fun stuff all around, I think. Right, Jay? Good morning. Yeah. Yeah. Good morning. Exciting. Almost afternoon. Almost afternoon. A lot of enthusiasm. Yeah. I guess at the local level. I don't know about everybody else, but yeah. uh, anyhow, Jay, let's dive into the numbers so far in the stock market and let's take a look at where things have been um, cooking and where they have been uh, struggling, I guess. Mm-hmm. What do you want to look at? NASDAQ? First, first, let's dive into the uh, big three. We'll look at the S&P, the Dow, the NASDAQ, and then we'll look at the Russell. Okay. Go ahead. Write all those numbers off. So for the Dow, uh, what do you want to look at? Uh, the year to date or? The Dow, yeah. Let's look at year to date. Year to date, we are at not even negative 1%. For the Dow Jones? Yeah, that's what it says. Come on. No way. I actually don't know if I believe that. Let me let me <laughs> double d- check me. Let me fact check that, please. <laughs> so I'm gonna log in and take a look at what you're seeing here. Oh no, I messed up. Yeah, there's no way. I mean, if you are, I would love to take that number. I Why think anybody would take that up? number. Am I having technical issues? Here? You might be. You might be. If you are, it's okay. So first, let's look at the Dow Jones right now. Year to date, I have this at a loss of ten percent year to date. It makes more sense. So Dow Jones down about 10%, and I'm pretty sure that one is going to be faring uh, the best of the three. Let's look at the S&P 500 year to date. Oh, here we go. That one is down almost 21%. So believe it or not, that's actually an improvement, right? That's that's been uh, That's been on the upside of things as of the late. We've seen the market moving quite a bit. And then how about the NASDAQ? NASDAQ has been hit pretty hard. Uh, so far for the year. Hmm. And if we could look at the year to date number on the NASDAQ, wow, almost 33. 34%. Yeah. That is insane. That's a lot of money lost, a lot of capital lost. You know, all those great places that people made money for the last five, 10 years, especially during COVID, right? Yeah. A lot of people made money in, in the NASDAQ, the tech uh, titans, if you will. And they thought, geez, this is quite easy. Just put all my money in Amazon, uh, Google, Facebook, and all the tech companies and just continue making money hand over fist. Yeah, basically wiped out all the gains, right, from 2021? A lot of those gains, you know, so think about it. It's it's not a, a 34% loss of just your the money you've made, but 34% off of the peak, I mean, for the year. Mm-hmm. So wherever you started at the beginning of the year, depending if you had money invested in the last five or 10 years, you lost 30% of your principal. That's a lot of money. Yeah. A lot of money. Crazy. And I don't know if the pain is over. I don't think so. Man, imagine that doctor's appointment. The pain is not over, Jason. There's still more to go. Well, that's why we were uh, hoping for things to change yesterday, right? But yeah, I mean, not as much as I thought would change, you know, like. And we'll get into some of the politics behind yeah. the market, you know, because I think that's what's important is, is we're not politicians, but we know it plays a role in. How okay. people make money or lose money and how profitable companies can be and their tax implications, things like that. So 
all those play a role. And then how about the, the Russell 2000? Russell 2000 is made up of the smaller companies in the segment, you know, large cap, mid cap, small cap. These are the smaller cap companies in the market there on the Russell 2000 is down 21% year to date, which isn't too bad. I mean, these are smaller companies. You think they may have less capital, uh, but they're also trading at lower PE multiples. Makes sense, right? All right, let's look at uh, some of the places that have actually done quite well so far for the year. One of those being energy. It's been a common theme. We did see um, a peak in energy. This was back in June, so early June. And then things kind of traded south a bit, but in the last few weeks, they've been back up. And actually, we've reached a new peak. And that new peak came as of two days ago. Year to date, the XLE is up 58%. Wow, well, I noticed 58%. that actually. 58%. Was trading higher. Now, these are quite volatile, right? Yeah. So this is the energy. You're talking about oil. You're talking about natural gas, things like that. Um, anything related to the energy sector, non-green, right? Uh, 58%. Wow. Yeah, that so that's a great place. rapidly since- it did, It's October. very volatile. Yeah. Very volatile. So when we looked at numbers in June, things looked great. They came down, you know. So if I look at July 15th, so even just a month after that, I mean, prices were, were cut down maybe 30%, almost 35%. So they cut that, that gain, that year-to-date gain in half in just a month. Just for XL, XLE. Just for XLE. Right? We're just looking at the Energy Select Spider. Look at September 26th, $68. September 26th, 68.75. Yeah. Wow. And I mean, you can't get that number unless you go back to like February. Yeah. Somewhere wow. around there. So yeah, I mean, high <laughs> high highs and low lows, low lows, right? Yeah. But that's what you get when you invest in energy. Wow. And I think it's going to be volatile. We're, we're going into the colder months. We still have a war in Ukraine and some other things heating up over there overseas. So that does not does not look like there's any end in sight. How about interest rates and how they're playing a role into the financial sector? You think about banks, you think about lending, going to buy a car, going to buy a house, Mortgages. but credit card debt. I've seen reports recently that credit card debt is on the rise, mm -hmm. in inflation on the rise. That's so the <laughs> that's weird. <laughs> the financial sector, that's the XLF. We're looking at the financial spider sector. Year to date is actually down about 13 and a half percent. So a um, little bit better than the S&P 500, maybe lost about half as much, uh, but not quite as good as the Dow Jones. I think that these are a pretty decent setup as we're going into a rising interest rate environment. And I like the financials in the intermediate term. So we want to keep an eye on those. It has not panned out so far, um, but I still think that the valuations are, are pretty good. They've got great balance sheets. They pay healthy dividends. And as rates go up, they make more money, which is what we want our clients to do. How about the real estate sector? So we think about the cost of real estate. If, if you've owned a home, you've seen those values go up quite a bit. Um, they have come down and prices have come down, not a lot, not 50% or anything like that. Quite a bit though. They have come down. And we've been watching on the Gulf Coast down in Florida, looking at properties. I've seen properties down about 25%. Again, they they are inflated. I mean, they went up 50, 60% in one year. So mm -hmm. um, they've cut those gains down, but it comes down to affordability, right? So if you're looking at a $100,000 house and interest rates are 3% and your mortgage payment is, I don't know, 800 bucks a month. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden they go from three to seven and a quarter, seven and a half, that same house, instead of costing you seven, 800 bucks a month, might cost you over a thousand. Yeah. So you, it's not that you don't want to pay for the home. It's not that you don't think the value is there. You just can't afford the payment. Yeah. So you don't qualify. So that's bringing in, it's reducing the number of buyers mm -hmm. that were available to buy certain homes. So it's forcing people to lower their price if they want to get a buyer. Right. Yeah. How so they're sitting on the market longer. Correct. They are. Yeah. That's another thing too. They're sitting on the market lo uh, longer. For that specific reason. And I think there's less and less inventory because people realize that they kind of missed the boat if they were looking to cash out and just buy something else. Mm -hmm. Anyhow, 
<laughs> Real estate select, uh, select spider ETF, the XLRE year to date is down 28.77%. Wow. 28%. So that's worse than the, that's worse than the Dow. That's worse than the S and P 500. These tend to fare well uh, long-term over rising interest rate environment. They're one of the best ways to hedge against inflation. And again, they're not paying off. There are no handsome rewards for being invested in the real estate uh, sector at this point, mm -hmm. to this point. Now we're nine months in or 11 months in. So uh, there's still some time. And I think inflation has just kind of started to tick up in the last, what, seven, eight months. Mm -hmm. So it does take time for things to transpire. So we've seen that both in the financials. We've seen that also in the real estate sector. Shifting over to the uh, fictitious, I guess, if you will, the magical investments, <laughs> if you want to call them investments. But let's take a look at some of the cryptocurrencies. Year to date, the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust is down 72%. Not too great. Ethereum. That's the Ethereum Trust. The ETH is down 75%. And the Grayscale Litecoin Trust year to date is down 68 and change. Not so great. They're not a good hedge against inflation. Doesn't appear to be, right? Doesn't appear that they're going to be acting much differently than the stock market. It's not a safe haven, right? You're down a lot more. Double, triple <coughs> what the stock market is down. Yep. And how about gold? So you think of gold, you know, a thousand bucks worth of gold, gold bullion back 50 years ago, bought you a nice suit. Today, it still buys you about the same. Year to date is down about 5.25%. So you're not, you're not finding safe haven in gold. You're not finding it in cryptocurrencies. You're not keeping your money preserved in real estate. Maybe some hard assets. That's a little bit different. Um, and we looked at financials. You're not making money there. You didn't make any money in the Dow Jones, not the S&P 500, mm -hmm. not the technology companies for sure, no. losing the most there besides the cryptos. And then gold, you're, you're not able to uh, save any principal there either. And not even in the smaller companies that trade at lower multiples that may have had a head start, those companies are not doing well either. So did we just wow. throw our hands up and just say, forget this whole investing <laughs> thing? Like this is, I mean, I'm not able to make money anywhere. Why, what am I doing here? Do I just go to cash? Well, let's put things into perspective. We know inflation is going up. Cost of goods is going up. We know the interest rates are going up. So if you need to borrow, if you have an adjustable rate mortgage, if you're a business and you have a line of credit, all those costs are going up. Mm -hmm. Well, just cut back on spending. Okay, let's think about that for a minute. Cut back on spending. What are the things that are going up? How about gas, oil, energy? Everything. So I just, I'm just going to go to work. I'm going to come home. I'm going to eat at home and I'm not going to spend as much money going out to restaurants. I'm not going to travel as much. I'm not going to go out and buy the, the Gucci uh, shoes that I want or the coach purse, right? That's fine in theory, except I have to put gas in my car to get to work, right? Yeah, certain things you need. You need. Yeah. And All those you, costs are going up. You know, and saving things like, like what you're talking about, you can only do that for a certain amount of time. I mean, that's, you know, and hopefully everything fixes itself or gets better and then you can start spending again. But That's the idea, you know. right? But, but right now, our biggest enemy is Jerome Powell. Our biggest enemy is the Fed. Mm -hmm. And they have a job to do. They have a job to reduce spending. They have a, a, a job to, they have the onus of reducing spending and slowing down the economy. Yeah. And they're doing a lot of that. They're working towards it. It's not going to be fast enough though. I feel like this is like a slow dance, mm -hmm. slow dance into the fire. Yeah. <laughs> so we haven't hit bottom yet. Yeah. More on that later in the show. With that, let's take a quick break and we'll be right back with the show. Retirement income is not an end game. It's only part of your planning. It's meant to carry you through a long and big part of your life that can't be filled with worry or concern that you'll outlive your money. The last thing you want to worry about after working the past 30 to 40 years of your life is money and having enough of it. Listen to our show and schedule consultation to learn more about how we can give you the confidence you deserve so you can focus on the things you truly enjoy. This is Pennywise Financial and this is Constantine Katrinos.
Welcome back to Pennywise Financial Podcast. Your host, Constantine Kitrinos, and myself joining the program, Jason Georgia. Oh, very uh, How was that? radio-like. <laughs> very radio-like. I don't like my voice on the radio. That's okay. Don't listen to it. A lot of people don't, though, I hear. They don't like your voice or they don't like their own voice? I don't know. <laughs> Maybe. No. Come on. <laughs> Come on now. But anyway. Well, they say, you know, the, the people that do radio. Yeah are better on the radio because of their, their soothing voice. But if they were to do- You have to talk the vi- deep. Yeah, I guess so. I don't know. I don't know. Let's see. So uh, moving into the second part of the show, we like to talk about real life scenarios, real situations um, for both clients and prospects that maybe have brought to the table that maybe other folks are thinking about, whether they're existing clients or maybe people that are working with a financial advisor are doing things on their own, mm-hmm. right? Because there's a there's a lot of that out there. Yeah. There's a lot of people, especially the last few years, younger generation, I say younger, like 45 and under, that, you know, were able to make quite a bit of money in the last couple of years. And they're starting to worry and they're starting to look for options. And they're yeah. starting to say, geez, okay, like I made a ton of money. I owed taxes. And I just reinvested because I thought it would continue going up, making 10, 15, 20% a year. And that's not happening. Yeah. Maybe the stock market is broken. Mm. The stock market broken? I don't know. You tell me. <laughs> what do you think, Jay? I don't know. I think it. it's not broken, but it just goes through ups and downs. And this is one of the downs. I mean, we had a great year in 21, you know, which is, was a crazy year to tell you the truth. You don't see returns like that typically. No. Um, and then this year's kind of leveling everything out by bringing everything back down. But we do want to talk about the bonds that we started getting into, right? Yeah, it's it's a nice segue into, into bonds, into fixed income. And it's something that we really haven't talked about much in the last decade or so. We've had a lot less exposure to fixed income and bonds because we were in a declining rate environment. And think about this. So for the last 40 years, last 40 years, Investors have been in this slow decline of interest rates for the better part of 40 years. Mm -hmm. It hasn't been going up. Yeah. It's not like- uh, It's been that long, steady decline? Not a a steady decline for 40 years. Yeah. But we have not seen this type of accelerated rate raising in about 40 years. Not even during the 80s when we had the recession? 80s is a little different story. You think about like, so if you go back, think about the 70s, you had the Carter administration. So- That's about 40 years, which is nuts. Yeah. Right? Makes me feel very old. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. So think about it. I'm thinking 40 years in my head and I'm thinking 60s. Yeah. Well, yeah. If we were in 2000. Yeah, exactly. I know. Wow. It's insane. When you you say that and put it into perspective, it's like, oh yeah, geez, I guess in time flies. Mm -hmm. So um, fixed income and individual bonds and bond funds and all those things have been um, the talk lately and, and, and people looking for ways to protect. So let's just talk about the, the bond index. So okay. if you were to buy a bond fund or the bond index or ETF that mimics that, some kind of investment that looks at the general landscape of fixed income and bonds. When you think of bonds, why do you buy bonds? Why does anybody buy it? Bonds. Safety, I guess. Safety, More right? Conservative. I want a, a nice coupon from a bond. Mm-hmm. I want stability with income. I want that set interest rate. Or- I want a set type of coupon yeah. or return is what you're expecting. Yeah. Right. Versus the stock market, stock market, you, you know, you're thinking, well, no, I don't need income. I want this money to grow. I, I have 10, 15 years for this money to really take off. Yeah. But your expectation in those stocks is a lot higher than it is with bonds, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So in the last decade or so, let's say the average bond was making anywhere between three and a half and four and a half percent, which is okay. Yeah. So if interest rates are going up and the cost of goods and services is going up and uh, right now, I mean, if you look at inflation, we're almost at 9%. It's been going down, trickling down. I think of it like a bathtub, like it's like a slow drain. You yeah. need some Drano or something here. <laughs> and I know uh, Jerome Powell is trying to do his best to clear that drain and, and, and draw down inflation and, and reduce spending and slow down the economy. But coupled with that, it's presented some opportunity for folks in the past that was really not available. 
We didn't really talk about it much. So right now, I mean, I could tell you that I've had clients that ask me, what can I do short term? Mm -hmm. I don't know that the market's bottomed yet. I've got a lot of cash and I want to invest. Mm -hmm. And we've said this from time to time over the months throughout 2022. So what we've been able to do is build some short-term individual bond portfolios that yield anywhere from four to 5%. If you go into corporate bonds, you might be able to grab six or seven That's if we go great. out a year or two. So is it going to change your life? Probably not. Is it going to keep up with inflation? Unfortunately, no. Mm-hmm. But some folks who have a shorter time horizon want some comfort and say, uh, say and think and believe that, hey, I'd like to be able to buy stocks cheaper than they are today. Mm -hmm. They're cheap today to a certain extent. We look at price to earning multiple ratios. Yeah, it's, things are starting to look a little bit better. I don't think stocks overall are very cheap, quote unquote, at this point. Not yet. Mm -hmm. I think they can get a lot cheaper. Mm -hmm. You know, get, clip your coupons and, and wait for the sale. I don't think we've seen the sale yet. Yeah. Remember the Ames two-day sale back in the day? Yeah. Ames two-day sale. I feel like they had it every week. Yeah. <laughs> two-day sale. Expires But you soon. really don't think that the prices on some of these uh, stocks are um, at their low yet? That Unfortunately, no. Okay. I know I'm not going to make a lot of friends by saying that. It's not something you want to hear your financial advisor say, your money manager say. It's not something you want to sit across from the table with a client that has investments with you say. So you might question, well, okay, well, if they're going lower, why don't I just get out now and just buy back in when they're cheaper? Well, if you can do that and you have a crystal ball and you know exactly when to get out and when to get in, fantastic. Well, Please let me know. Not necessarily. Like they're really low now anyway, right? They're not they are. They're, they're the pretty low. low. No, they're not. But at the they're most. a lot not. lower than they were. So even if you are invested, wouldn't it be a good time to start buying slowly back into it? So there's a couple ways you can do that without okay. reaching into your pocket or going to your bank and writing a check and, and putting more money into it. Because all those things cost you money, right? Yeah. Right now, they cost you money. And chances are most people don't have more income now, more money to throw into investments. They're mm -hmm. looking for ways to save and cut back and maybe even reducing the amount they put in their 401k. Hopefully not. Mm -hmm. So there's a couple different things. Number one is if you have stocks that pay dividends, mm -hmm. instead of having those dividends get paid to cash, you have those dividends reinvested. Reinvest. Yep. So you're buying shares as they're going down yep. in price, yep. which accumulates more shares. Yeah, it's not going to necessarily build a higher account value, yep. but you're buying fractional shares yep. in those investments. And that's typically what we do with most of our dividends. Yeah. How about on the bonds or the fixed income? So those typically pay out to cash, right? If, you're if you own these individual bonds mm -hmm. and not the funds or ETFs. So that can build a cash balance so that we can look progressively throughout the year to find more buying opportunities. Mm -hmm. And that does happen. And that's something that we do. You can certainly increase more uh, that you're saving in your 401k. But like I said, most people don't have that. Mm -hmm. They don't have extra money to put into an investment that they're not going to see the return on for another five, 10 years or when they retire. Yeah. Right. Because it's not like in five years, you're going to take out 50 to 100,000 from your retirement. You're going to save that money until you need it, yeah. until you need it for retirement income, for supplements. But for those folks that are in the later stage of uh, either approaching, retirement or their RMD age or taking out distributions, they want more stability. And that's something that I think it's a huge value add is looking at these individual bond portfolios to generate a nice, uh, consistent, steady income stream yeah. and having that paired or coupled with some stocks, some very select stocks. I think that's the other thing too is, you know, I got the question, Barb asked me this question. She says, how are you picking the stocks? Like, how do I know which stocks? Should I just buy the S&P 500, the top 500 companies? Yeah. I would say no. I mean, when you buy any of those indexes, you're buying all the good ones and you're buying all the bad ones. Yeah. Now, it's not to say that we're not going to own the majority of those, but I think if you're handpicking some of those select stocks, looking for very attractive multiples, right? And companies that will tend to profit. Like I said, a few of those sectors we've been moving money, shifting money over to in satellite positions, we like financials. We like healthcare as a defensive play. We looked at some of the um, consumer staples mm -hmm. in the past. I'd say that those have run up quite a bit because people were looking for safety. Mm -hmm. They're more expensive now. Yeah, I mean, to pay, um, let's say, 30 times, if we look at the price to earnings multiple, 
of let's say 30 on a Clorox, mm -hmm. which is what some of the tech companies trade at, it's pretty high, rich valuation, price to earning multiple. Yeah. Where a more reasonable might be anywhere from 12 to 16, something like that. So some companies are expensive, yeah. believe it or not, because they've gone up in value already. Mm -hmm. You don't wanna buy those when they're expensive. Yeah. So that's another point where people will make mistakes when they do things on their own. Okay. I met with a younger couple this week. And Mr. T, Mr. T says to me, I don't like to look at my statements because he's afraid of something. Any idea what that is? The loss or? Right. Yeah. It's not just the loss, but it's his reaction to that loss. He's afraid that if he looks at the statement, he's going to call me up and say, you know, do we need to be buying these stocks? Should we, should we get out now? Mm -hmm. Selling it almost the bottom to then go into what? Cash to yeah. make two or three or 4% or 5%. Um, not a good place to be. So there's a lot of mistakes being made right now. Yeah. A lot of folks. And that's where we're having more and more conversations. People are calling us. People are reaching out to us. People that are not necessarily affiliated with us. Mm -hmm. Strangers, right? Yeah. People, I'd say strangers. People don't know the company. They, they see our ads. They see our, our podcast. And they say, well, geez, I need some help. And these, you know, this firm may be the right fit for me. Yeah. So with that, let's take a quick, uh, quick break. And we'll be right back with the show. Retirement income is not an end game. It's only part of your planning. It's meant to carry you through a long and big part of your life that can't be filled with worry or concern that you'll outlive your money. The last thing you want to worry about after working the past 30 to 40 years of your life is money and having enough of it. Listen to our show and schedule consultation to learn more about how we can give you the confidence you deserve so you can focus on the things you truly enjoy. Welcome back to the Pennywise Financial Podcast. This is Constantine here at Monarch Wealth Management with my co-host, Jason Georgiev. Welcome back to the show, everyone. Here's a fun part of our segment, right? The latest and greatest news and how it affects our clients and their money and all kinds of unique and fun ways to look at things. First thing I got on my list, do you notice anything that happened exciting or dull on Monday? Monday night, what was happening? Monday. I don't Monday know, night. I just Election stuff. Okay, election stuff might have been on your mind. How about a $1.9 billion record jackpot? Oh, the lotto. The lotto. Yeah. The no, lotto. Still nobody's won. Do you know what's happened? But, but do you know what happened? No, no. I didn't really either until my wife Why, told something me. Something happened? I didn't know that. Something happened. Okay. Something happened. It's not the first time it's happened. So this Powerball drawing, I, I didn't, again, it's exciting, right? 1.9 billion. I mean, it's a pretty <laughs> big deal. I now. said I B know. with a billion. <laughs> B with a billion. Okay. What do we got? Billion with a B. Anyhow, um, Powerball drawing. So Monday night, my wife says to me, do you want to buy a ticket? So, all right, buy a ticket. I'm not a lotto guy. I'm not a gambler. Yeah. All right, I'll buy one ticket, a ticket. Sure. Come on, why don't you buy? Uh, anyway, all right, I'll buy a ticket. Now, did you know you could buy tickets online? I heard they that. have a service. They charge yeah. a service fee and it's about 25% of the actual ticket cost. Convenience. Convenience, correct. But I'm sitting in my PJs mm -hmm. and it's close to the closing and we're getting, you know, winding down from dinner and just getting my son ready for bed. And she's like, do you want to go to the store? Nah, not really. Why don't I pop on the app? I'm trying to buy a ticket, can't buy a ticket. She says, why don't you throw on some clothes and go? I said, all right, run out to the local gas station, play a quick pick, come back home. Missed the results. Um, but I'll tell you why I missed the results. So the next day, my wife says to me, do you realize what happened with the, the drawing? I said, no, it was delayed for security reasons. Why? That's what I, what do you mean? Security reasons? Like, <laughs> did, did they get attacked? Did they get like hacked somehow or invaded? So I, I didn't really think much of it when I couldn't buy the ticket online. There was an issue. I thought maybe it was a glitch. Their system like was down. Issue. Yeah. Yeah. Well, apparently this security issue must have had more of an impact than I thought. So they didn't do the drawing and I still don't think the drawing has happened yet. There's no results that I can see of. And actually I looked at this article. So the security issue, um, think about this. There are 45 states that participate. Mm -hmm. Plus um, you've got um, uh, DC, mm -hmm. got the Virgin Islands, <laughs> US Virgin Islands and Puerto Rico. Okay. This is not the first time this has happened. 
in 2022. On October 19th, the second time, this so this is actually the second time. So it happened October 19th and it happened this past this Monday. This glitch you're talking this about. This quote unquote glitch, whatever that yeah. means. And they said they, they were not able to do the uh, drawing because of security issues. And they said that they would have the results up as soon as possible. And then it would be recorded in a secured studio and put up on their YouTube channel. What? I, to me, it sounds so odd, so bizarre. Like what is actually going, I, I don't know. But I just thought that was pretty interesting. Did you yeah. see it on the news? Probably no, not I didn't with all the, with all the political it. stuff going on. That's you what I'm saying. All, all I saw was political voting. I'm sure. Political banter. There yeah, you go. Back and forth. Yeah. yeah. And you know, I heard little things about the, the lotto being so high, but that, that was about it. I didn't hear anything about any tech issue or anything like that. Well, I'll Our be interested when they do have the winner. I'll, I'll write a blog it's on this scary about what to truth. do. Well, yeah. I mean, people are poking fun at it. They're like, well, what does this mean? Is it, is it rigged? Is it like, did something happen? Did is there a hack? Is it China? Is it Russia? Is it another country that hacked us that they don't want to admit? It's a lot of money. It's a lot of money. <laughs> it's a lot of money. Imagine if a, 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 if, 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 a, if a country could could hack somehow. I mean, th doesn't the machine, you know, spit out the balls? I mean, if there's well, a I think way, that part is not really hack proof unless you're like messing with that specific machine. I mean, you'd have but, to be pretty involved. Yeah, I don't know. You're talking like conspiracy stuff. Yeah. I, all right, let's you not get into that stuff. Yeah, let's not then, go down that yeah. rabbit hole. But anyhow, one point nine billion record high um, Powerball huge, jackpot, huge. pretty big. I don't know if they uh, actually did the drawing or not. If not, I want to look and see what that jackpot ends up being. I do want to talk about um, lotto winners because we have had ten lotto winners that we've experienced over the years. Mm -hmm. I think only two have money left, or maybe one. Mm -hmm. Most of them spend the money. You know, you pay taxes, and you think even a million bucks it goes pretty quick. Um, but more than likely that 1.9 billion, there'll be a few winners. Mm -hmm. Say there's 10 winners. You share that jackpot. You pay taxes. You share that with Uncle Sam. You got family. You got friends. Oh, Jay, I'm your best friend all of a sudden. I better get some money, right? That kind of money, even after you pay taxes and do whatever you want. You Stupid still, money. Still got a ton of money Stupid left money. <laughs> Stupid money. Really You'll is. You'll never run out of money. No. Uh, how about election? Uh, how could we ignore that? Election results. Um, pretty divided government. Um, yeah. Not a ton of changes that I saw, you know, a lot of things that I kind of anticipated would happen. Some things that I thought might happen didn't happen. Yeah. Well, it looks like the Republicans are going to get Congress, but the Senate is still up in the air. So we'll see what happens. But this is phase one. Two years from now, we have the phase next phase, two. <laughs> phase two, which would be the presidential election. Yeah. And I heard Biden wants to run again. Come on. Yeah. That's what I heard. Well. That he's really interested in running again. I don't know that he's able I mean, to, to, to finish the race now. I don't know if he's able to finish his term. I hope so for his sake and yeah. our sake, but um, <laughs> we'll see what happens, right? Yeah. Right? Yeah, I don't I don't know. After this election, I'm kind of at awe, in awe of everything. I thought that there would be a lot more change with the way things have been going with the economy and everything. Mm -hmm. And I didn't see as much upheaval as I uh, thought would happen, to tell you the truth. Um I'm kind of surprised at how many people actually voted for the current party. Hey, after we, seeing everything, you know, the, the way I look at it, it, it regardless of who's in power, mm -hmm. our duty, our fiduciary responsibility for our clients is to try to protect and grow their assets in Definitely. any way possible. Definitely. And there's opportunities regardless of who's in power mm -hmm. and any, in any, yeah, realm. everybody has, but let's face it. Yeah. Whether you support this party or not, President Biden is not quote unquote business friendly. Like every business owner knows that. Yeah. And if you're comfortable with that and you like that and you don't mind paying more taxes and reducing your profits and, and sharing more of the wealth, that's, mm -hmm. that's okay. That's, a, you know, you have a right to that opinion. But I think that um, if we consider, is this a positive or negative for the overall economy and uh, financial market? I'd say a divided government is actually pretty good. Sounds crazy, right? And I'll tell you why. Because if it's a if it's a deadlock with a lot of these votes, mm -hmm. not a lot can happen. Not a lot of change can happen. Guess yeah. what that does? That locks in some stability. Mm -hmm. The market likes stability. Mm -hmm. The market doesn't like, oh, what is President Biden going to do? What is President Trump going to do? Yeah. What is President DeSantis going to do? Oh, wait, no. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. <laughs> um, you know, so so it. It, there's more certainty because there's not a lot that the government can do. And you'll yeah. hear this more and more on some of the, the media outlets. Um, so think about it. They've given us a lot of help right now, right? Mm -hmm. 
people are standing on their feet. Business owners are growing. They're actually looking to hire and, 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 and replace jobs and things like that. And there's no workers and unemployment is low. So we got a lot of these problems that we can't figure out. We're still facing that problem of shortage of employees. Absolutely. And that, and that doesn't, I mean, it doesn't make sense. Yeah. Where are the people? That this a lot of people just vanish. Yeah, no, we did. We did. We did. <laughs> Same but thing. If, if there is a divided yep. government, that means that they can't roll out additional funding programs to quote unquote help people that maybe don't even need the help anyway. So that means less spending, mm -hmm. right? So I kind of like some of those things. They, I'm trying to find an optimistic view on things despite the results. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So that's one thing. And I, and I think you asked this to me, and this has been asked um, by clients in the past, what do you think is going to happen if the election goes this way? Or what do you think is going to happen if the election goes this way? I remember um, before Biden ran, I remember before Trump ran, I yeah. remember the election before that. People would tell me that they have 500,000, 600,000, a million bucks in cash. Yeah. They're, they're waiting to invest until after the election. I said, what's going to happen after the election? Well, I'm going to know if the market's going to go up or down. Yeah. And so you asked me this the other day. You said, what do you think is going to happen if this is the outcome? Yeah. And I said, I really don't know. Mm -hmm. And I kind of don't care yeah. from that perspective. We just have to shift a little bit and make some tweaks according to what we think may transpire. Yeah. But we don't place bets on the election. No. It's not a gambling joint. Yeah, no. At least last time I checked. <laughs> we got to call DraftKings maybe. <laughs> I'd like to draft uh, President Biden. And uh, okay, anyhow. Uh, so- so we talked about the election. I don't want to spend a ton of time. I'm sure people are uh, bored to death about hearing it. Yeah. And uh, how about Twitter? Do you use Twitter at all? I don't. I'm have you ever used Twitter? People. You joined Twitter a long time ago, didn't you? No, I've never had it. You're not on Twitter? No. no I don't oh, do that. maybe somebody's impersonating you. Okay. Well, Elon Musk. Do I have Musk, a Twitter account that you, do, that you saw? I thought I saw you. Oh, okay. I'm probably on there as somebody else. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I'm going to have to look into that. How about Elon Musk? Elon yeah. Musk is a new owner, came in with a kitchen sink. It was kind of funny. Mm -hmm. uh, but you see a mass exodus, a lot of these uh, actors and people in Hollywood that want to leave the platform, leave Twitter. And they're saying that Twitter now with Elon Musk um, is disseminating some information that may be questionable. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure how he's doing all that. It sounds like a pretty powerful guy. Mm -hmm. um, if anything, it sounds like he's opening up the doors to allow uh, more free speech and things like that. And that's what he was saying. But how about the, do you know anything about, since you don't use the platform, you probably don't know this, the blue check next to your name. Yeah, I don't know that. So it's more for like uh, influential people okay. that have a lot of reach, like a celebrity, an actor, a politician. Uh, it will not be us. Uh, okay. This is not affecting us. But for those folks to be quote unquote verified, mm -hmm. instead of having, like I said, somebody impersonate you. Yeah. What if somebody was impersonating a politician or somebody with political influence? Oh yeah. And then they think it's the politician. Right. Or, and then they're sending yeah. out messages that, that so may be false. It's kind of a verification is system. Is that what they were doing or that's what they're doing now? I don't now? know what they were doing. What they're doing now is in order to have a blue check next to your name, you have to pay this $8 a month fee. And so some of these people are like going up in arms, like, oh my gosh, I, I got to pay this fee. This is insane. Yeah. It's $8 a month for it's somebody membership. who probably has 20 times your net worth, yeah. um, who has a lot of access to influence people, quite a bit of people, right? I heard different though. Well, let's hear it. I'd love to hear I this. heard that he was going to be starting the pay, you know, like uh, how some of these apps, they give you a certain amount you can do on the app, but then if you pay, you get full access. Mm -hmm. That's what I heard he's doing. Well, I think that's part of it too, okay. but that's a separate thing. Okay. That, that is one of the things. Yeah. Okay. And I think all these platforms now, all these social media and technology companies made quite a bit of money in the past. You know, they got set up, they got a bunch of users to come on for free, Yeah, come in Facebook. You don't pay anything, right? Advertising. Advertising. That's, that's it. Get they get, they drive traffic to the site or yep. to the app. And then they try to, spam you with as many yep. ads as they can exactly. and people spend money. Yep. But they're looking for other ways to to pivot and make money because profitability does not look good. Look at meta platforms. They shifted gears. They shifted their focus. What did they release? They're, uh, they're downsizing. They're, they're uh, laying off about 13% of their workforce, yeah. 13%. But they, but they upsized <laughs> big time during 21. Did you hear that? Yeah, I'm sure they did because think about it. We were all locked up in our houses. 
We couldn't yeah. do anything. But they, uh, but even for example, Meta, Meta added so much to their workforce. I think it was like seventy five percent. They almost wow, that's doubled, insane. Doubled their work. That's a lot. That's a and lot now, of people. And now, if they're laying off thirteen percent, they still hired more than they're laying off. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. So if you yeah. look at the numbers, because I saw that study on TV and they showed a whole bunch of different companies, Alphabet, Meta, um, and some other big tech companies did the same exact Snapchat, thing. Snapchat. Amazon. TikTok. Amazon was 120%. Amazon is- They almost more than doubled their workforce. Sure. And now got, they're laying off. You got a bunch of moms and dads at home um, that have not a lot of things to do. They'll flip through and yeah, we need this. We need. Yeah. I love when I come home and there's like, five Amazon boxes. Oh and I, yeah. You automatically my blood pressure goes through the roof <laughs> and I want to like holler at my wife <laughs> and I talk to other, it's, I don't know if this is like a gender thing. Yeah. It could be, Yeah, but I feel like females yeah. are more uh, oh, apt we'll to easy. order things <laughs> online and being targeted. Yeah. Um, my mother-in-law with Facebook, Facebook ads, um, Cons, you're not getting my brownie wife. points here. You're talking about your wife and your mother in law. Let's be real. Bye. They're not listening. <laughs> They're not listening to the show. They might listen now to this show, which, oh, which could be Lisa, uh, just for the record, I do not agree. Yeah, you do. <laughs> Come on. This is uh, not a scripted show here. Oh, boy. Uh, so that's Elon Musk. And then how about here's another one that was kind of controversial. Uh, it's come up before in the past. Mm -hmm. What just happened over the past weekend? Over the past weekend. How about an hour of your time? Anything, anything oh, change? Daylight savings? Daylight savings. Yeah. Are you a fan? I I don't know. I like getting up in the morning and not being dark, which that's what happens. But then it's again, still pretty dark. It's not like but when pitch you wake black, up, but you it's know, six thirty, seven o'clock, and it's the you, it's light outside. I hate waking up and getting ready to go and it's dark. So here's the, the trade off with that. Yeah. Now, instead of it being dark at 5, 5.15, it's dark at 4, or starting to get darker at 4. So at it's night. darker earlier. Yeah. And I don't night, like that 4 o'clock, 4 o'clock's afternoon to me. I don't me. like that. My either. family is like just starting to wake up. Yeah. <laughs> My family's like, it's it's 3 o'clock. Let's party. Um, yeah. So, uh, but there's some studies on this, which I thought were, were kind of interesting and unique. It's, it's talking about the change of people's mood. Because it, it oh, yeah. I guess internally our systems are kind of aligned with the sunlight and they automatically change and gravitate. And when we shift that hour, it changes happier. things even more. You're happy, you get more mental vitamin health, D. stress. Mm -hmm. So it's affecting people and and you know, it takes time to adapt. This is another thing that came up too is um, do you actually gain an hour or do you lose an hour? Or does something happen with that extra hour? Is it really an extra hour? Do you get an extra hour sleep? No, it's just you don't get an extra hour? No. If you go to bed and wake up at the same time, do you still get an extra hour? I guess it you actually do. How long you stay asleep? You actually do. How do you get an hour? What happens at two a.m.? The clocks go back an hour to one a.m. Yeah, so you're gaining an hour of sleep. You got it. Unless you wake up an hour earlier. Why would you do that? <laughs> it's because daylight savings. Let me set my clock an hour earlier so I invalidate that extra funny. hour I should have got. It's true because of your internal clock. Yeah. You wake up. But I I woke up earlier. So I did not. We, I did. We woke up at the time we were supposed to wake up yeah. and we woke up refreshed. Mm -hmm. So some people say, well, you don't, you know, it's not really an extra hour. So what happens when we spring forward, right? In what, like May or whatever? Yeah. The clocks go forward an hour and we make up that time. And so we're back to normal. We don't yeah. actually gain an hour for the year. But think about it but too. But we do for this time. When you set your clock back, what time do you usually set it back? Nine o'clock at night, don't you? I don't do anything. You, you, you know, you, you know, know what happens day? in my house? I'll tell you what happens in my house. So all of our clocks, 90% of them are digital. Yeah, yeah, they yeah, change yeah. automatically at 2 a.m., boom. Yeah. Cell phone changes automatically. Yeah. And, I, and we got the reminder from school. It says, hey, don't forget to change your clocks. Well, yeah. we don't really change. Didn't I text you guys and tell you? I think you did. <laughs> I kind of laughed. I didn't respond, but I did laugh to myself. Um, the only time where I am making changes is like the stove, yep. the, microwave, the microwave. Don't you have the big and wall I think clock? our toaster oven? No, I don't have one. I, I have don't really one of have those many cool walls. Ones, you know? My house is a house of windows. Oh yeah, you do have a lot of windows. We don't have a lot of wall this space. Not a lot of artwork. No room. All right. You have a lot of vases. I might. I might. Those big Greek. Next time. Next time you come come to the house which I haven't had anybody really over anyway. Yeah. Uh, we'll, we'll have to take a look at that. <laughs> but I think that's all the uh, current news and updates. We talked about Lotto and things like that. We have some more topics. Today. 
What's that? We got a lot covered a lot today. Of, covered a lot of ground. Absolutely. Yeah. With that, I think that's all the time we have for today's show. Thanks again for listening to the Pennywise Financial Podcast. This is Constantine here at Monarch Wealth Management with my co-host, Jason Georgiev. We'll see everyone next week. Take care. You've been listening to Pennywise Financial, brought to you by Monarch Wealth Management. Constantine and David really care about their clients. They want to make sure you're happy, so you'll continue to hire them. There's no commitments, and clients are free to leave whenever they want. Think about being able to pick up the phone and call someone for guidance and advice on almost anything, from buying a car, selling a home, buying vacation properties, or even selling a business. Reach out on the website at monarchwealthmanagement.com. There are two offices in Rochester and two offices in Buffalo. Reach out to us on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, and YouTube. Or call us toll-free at 800-480-1580. That's 800-480-1580. Until next time, this is Pennywise Financial, signing off. The opinions voiced in this program are for general information only and are not intended to provide specific advice or recommendations for any individual. To determine which investments may be appropriate for you, consult with your attorney, accountant, and financial advisor or tax advisor prior to investing. Securities are offered through LPL Financial, member FINRA, and SIPC.